so welcome. I'm so glad you all made it today. Uh, we may have one additional person joining. I think uh, we're kind of a mixture of central office and um, classroom teachers. So anything I have, um, I have are things that I've gotten from other resources. One I have made uh, and modified myself uh, to go along with the revised um, standards. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Please make sure that you do sign in for me. I'll put that link in the chat again for those of you that may not have got to click it yet coming in. But we're just going to go through in this we're such a small group we can have discussions and kind of have some questions and just kind of make this uh, an experience where we can kind of go through and um, uh, see what really has changed within the science standards. Uh, our agenda is we're going to review some documents and changes to the draft KAS for science, Kentucky Academic Standards for Science. We're going to look at the grade level overviews because those are things that have changed for the science standards. And we're going to look at some curriculum templates and some resources also because I always like to because where we're doing this right at the end of school, for those of you that are teachers, you're going to want to take this and go and start doing some planning and maybe looking for some new lessons. So I wanted to make sure and provide you with some resources to be able to go grab and do a little tweaking too and be able to use in the classroom. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I am going to make one request that as we're going through the standards, they are still in draft form. So everything that I have still has that draft stamped on it. So as soon as the standards are released in their final form and, you know, cleaned up, uh, I will print you a hard copy in color and get those to you. Floyd County, you're pretty easy. You're not too far away. Johnson County, I can get yours to you as well, Miss Miller. So we will get you a copy of the final draft of the standards for you to have. So don't waste the paper or the ink on printing these draft standards. Just kind of use those in digital form, but we will get you a hard copy. So as soon as those are released, I'll be hitting the print button for you on that. And I will give you the whole book of standards. It's gonna be K through 12 for you on this. So just uh, be aware of that. Um, just real quick, we're gonna go through some different documents that have been shared across the state uh, with different, um, groups that I've been in and I know Miss Isaacs and Miss Daggett you may you have access to some of these as well and so uh, I've just kind of put them all in one place so the first one we're going to look at and I'm going to put it in the chat so you can pull it up yourself or you can just watch the screen whichever you are most comfortable with so that is up to you let me go I'm going to put two links in the chat, one for the science at a glance and one for the draft of the science standards. So both of those are in the, in the chat. I'm going to pull up the first one, the science at a glance, because it's just something that KDE put out that gives you just a very simplistic overview of the whole process. Let's see if I can get it pulled up and pull it over here. So here's the document. It's a very easy read, not hard to go through. And so you can see there's even a link in this document to the draft standards. So here's one of my little tutorials I do usually in any training. You notice on my bar up here on my screen, this is just an organizational tip for you because I know you're going through all kinds of trainings and sometimes you don't know where you put it. And so for the ease, for you to be able to go back and find it, make a little tab on the bookmark bar. See here on my science standards, I can click on that and I have made a folder for my PIMSR training. So everything I want to get quick access to is right there. Um, I have one for the science March leadership, but I didn't put it under science standards because it was not just to science. So you have to organize these to where it's easiest for you. Now, how to make one of these folders is you go right here to the little star and you all can see my screen, right? You can see my little star and everything. And I'm going to click on that. And that's 
going to let me add it to a favorite. But I want to add one of these little folders up here. So I'm going to go to more. And here's the name of my file. But I want it on this bookmark bar. So I'm going to click on that bookmark folder. And I'm going to click new folder. So when I click new folder, it's going to create a folder on my bar so that I can just go to that whenever I have a training, but only do this for certain things that are really important to you that you want to get back to on a regular basis uh, that's on your toolbar because this other bookmark folder in the corners works just fine. But I'm going to make a new folder and I'm going to just say practice just for you all for this. And I'm going to click save and you see now on my bar is a practice folder. I just made it. So now if I go to this practice bar, look, it added that document there. So I've got it. It's right there for me, easy access. You might want to call it science standards, like what I have over here. You may want to, whatever that works for you as district, as a district person, you might need to call it something else. You might want to call it revisions. Maybe you already have a science standards and you make a new folder called revisions. Uh, but whatever works best for you. So I, I'm going to go through and I'm going to model keeping adding things to my folder on my bar, which gets really easy when you do it one time. So here is our Kentucky Academic Standards for Science. It goes through. This is for you to have to be able to read through. The organization will take a look at that. It's still the three dimensions, really as far as the amount of changes to the science standards, the good news is there's not a lot. There's some shifts, there's some moves, there's a little bit of modifying of some wording, but for the most part, they're the same. Now, the concerning part is, is our science test scores are really pretty low and our science standards have been around for what, about 10 years and they're gonna be around for about seven more now. And so just making sure that we are getting to the rigor and the intent of the standard. So, you know, we'll be offering some more trainings around that later on. So welcome to attend that. And I know there's all kinds of trainings going on this summer around the state. So be sure to get into some of those. But one of the pieces I really want us to take a look at are the grade band overviews. And so what I want you to do is you're going to pick which grade level you want to read. I want you to take the time to take a look at these overviews because they've done a really nice job of revamping them. They were there before, but they're better, you know, as far as the breakdown and the reading of them. Um, but what I'm going to do is ask you to click. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad you like. So now we're going to click on the draft of the science standards. So we're going to click on that one. And hopefully it'll pop it right up there. Woohoo! So if you go to the second page with the table of contents, I love this that they have done this with the draft. So I, I'm guessing it will be in the final. These are hyperlinked now. So pick your grade level. You want to go read your overview. And I am going to give you about four minutes to read that overview. Uh, let's give you three because they're not really that long. So you pick. Now I know. Ms. Hoskins and Ms. Miller, you all are teachers, and I know you're probably going to read, want to read each overview, but why don't, you know, just pick one to read right now, and that can be your choice, but pick one grade level overview you would like to read, and when you hover over it, it will let you just click on it and go to that, I'm going to go to sixth grade, and so that pulls mine up, and I'm going to give you three minutes to be able to read that. Mary, would you care to uh, repost the links? I had to switch from my laptop to my desktop. Oh, and I can't see right. it in the chat anymore. Oh, I'm so glad you made it. I didn't see you snuck in on me. You got in here on me, and I didn't even notice it. I am so sorry I had not greeted you, but <laughs> I'll stick those back in here for you. There they are. And so um, you're going to take a look at the draft standards and just click on whichever overview you want right. to. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I'll give you just a second longer, about uh, 15 more seconds to finish up. And while you're doing that, I'm going to go hit my little star and add my draft standards to practices. So all I have to do is hit the star and hit done. And looky there, it's now there too. So much easier to organize your stuff.
So be sure to take advantage of some of that. I got all kinds of folders. You can see my KVIC folder. Oh my goodness, I got them everywhere. Okay, after taking a look at that one grade level, because I know a lot of us, well, let me just say this. I know what Mary Belcher does. I sometimes will not even read the overview. But what did you notice about the overview for your grade level that you chose? You can unmute and talk about it, or you can type it in the chat, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Well, one thing I noticed, I looked at seventh grade Mary, and uh, mm -hmm. I didn't actually get all the way finished uh, or completed with it. But um, what it started out with was talking about the science and engineering practices instead of jumping right into what the kids are doing as far as the DCI. It started mm -hmm. really focused on those science and engineering processes about kids will be able to make models and, uh, you know, uh, developing and using uh, models, asking questions and analyzing and interpreting data and so on. So, I mean, that was right at the forefront of the uh, overview. Yeah, that is. I like to where you didn't get to read all of it. I'd like to note at the end, too, because it brings back to the science and engineering practices and the cross cutting concepts. So it starts with it and it ends with it too, kind of emphasizing, I think, that the importance of those. I think that's a great connection. Anybody else notice anything about them or something that you thought was a, a good point or helpful? Mary, I don't care to share. Um, oh, please do, Denise. I do not claim to be a science expert by no means. Oh, but I that's would, okay. Yeah. Sometimes it's so, best to have that eye looking at these. I think that's yeah. great. And I really like the performance base um, mm -hmm. section there that that has been added. Um, we, you know, are, we are part of the L3 and looking at a lot of performance based um, assessments in our district. So I was glad to see that. And now that may be very common in that. I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. I'm no, I haven't really looked ever. Look, I, I chose third grade today. I have never looked at the third grade and science standards. But I was glad to okay. see performance based in there. Yes, they definitely, the science is very heavy in that. And I think you hit on a very good point there, Denise, because there is so much around the three dimensions of the science engineering and cross-cutting concepts that a lot of us are still kind of in that old school of just forming, focusing on the core ideas and not all those skills and the performance, that the, the actual think skills they have to be able to do. And I think that's good. And, and they are including it. Notice on third grade, like you said, they're, they're talking about the questions, the science engineering practices and the cross cutting concepts are all there too. And once again, hit at the end too. So it's, it's tying it at the beginning and the end of each overview, it looks like it. Did anybody else have anything? Oh, Ms. Miller, thank you for putting in the chat specific expectations for each grade level and what the students should know by the next grade level. I think that's a great point. That is good. Um, when I was, I read sixth grade, as you all could see, I had it pulled up and I thought it was basically telling me everything that needed to be taken into account in teaching. So I thought that that was a really good, um, nice just overview because sometimes we can kind of get lost. To me, it's a great thing for the big ideas of what I have to teach. Um, this is very important for teachers to plan their lessons to help the next year teacher. That is exactly right. Agree. Uh, and wouldn't that be helpful if they would go and also read like the other overviews? That can be a very helpful thing too, um, to help them to see what the expectations were from the previous year. Awesome. 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 Okay. I'm going to go. There it is. We'll pull this back over here. All righty. So after looking at that, oops, we'll take a look at the PIMS or PowerPoint here in just a second. Um, but we're seeing the overviews have a little more detail for us and can be very beneficial in our planning to just kind of give us a big idea. And yes, those performance expectations are gonna give us that deeper dive. And then we can look at the three dimensions from those performance expectations. So just a nice thing to remember. So if you're sharing at your school or in your district, having people to really take the time to read the overview is a good place to start. 
and it's not so overwhelming too. You don't see all the boxes and you don't see all of this extra information everywhere. It's just, a, it's, it's a few paragraphs. It's one page that we read. So I do recommend that if you're gonna be going out and sharing within your district, really kind of highlight those overviews. It's a, just a nice, simple place to start uh, for people. The next thing are PIMSA resources. So some people are in across the state, PIMSA is doing this great training for leadership, your principals, district leads, to go through some science standards. And so they did provide us with some proposed drafts. So I just shared with you KDE's version that they shared out in March. And so PIMSA started their trainings in March. And so I'm gonna share with, and, and you're gonna notice, PIMS are is science, and you're going to notice a lot more detail. KDE gave us a nice overall view, and PIMS are going to get really specific. So let me put those in the chat for you, and I'm going to tell you which one. I'm going to put two things in the chat for you. All right, the first one is we're going to pull up the one pager. I love, I love a one pager. It makes things so simple to be able to look at. So whenever you click on it, okay, we're going to pull that back over here. All right, now here's my one pager. I want to save it. Here's just a little, to me, sometimes just getting organized is half the battle. So this is something I want to keep from this training and want to make sure I have access to it and can get back to it real easily. I'm going to go click on the star. Notice once again, since the last thing I saved was in my practice folder that I made just for this training for, for you all to model, you can just click done and looky here, there it is. It's already there in place. So everything's getting organized for you. So anytime you're in a training, this is a good little thing, especially if they're sharing a lot of resources that you wanna be able to get back to. So here is the KAS, KAS standards revision draft. So once again, making sure we include that draft word in there. And it goes through, notice it even goes, uh, it goes to elementary performance expectation change. So new to fourth grade, it even tells what it is and where it was moved from, kind of similar to what, and I didn't even go to the second page on KDEs. It had the same thing on the second page at a glance. I apologize, I did not go on that because I wanted to go ahead and get to this one. My apologies, but it gives a nice little brief overview too. PIMSR goes a little deeper in that they go by also the wording on the performance expectations. And even if there's no modifications, you can see first grade, there's no modification. So a first grade teacher can go to NGSS and really see the same information. Kindergarten's gonna see a little difference. When they go on NGSS website, when they look at KPS21, their clarification statement's gonna be modified. So, Always in the past, yes, our Kentucky Academic Standards for Science are straight from NGSS. They are still straight from NGSS, but Kentucky's done a little tweaking to them. So you always want to make sure that you go to the kystandards.org website and take a look. I would still recommend teachers going to the NGSS website to get a little bit more help with their standards because there's a lot of great documents there, but there are some changes. So just, just being aware that the NGSS website's not gonna be identical to what we have now in Kentucky in some places. Second grade, you'll notice that they have added a new cross-cutting concept to, one of, to the life science for um, in patterns. They've added patterns and in third grade, to one particular disciplinary core idea, they've added cause and effect for a cross-cutting concept. And you can see some different clarifications that have been added. And I'm just kind of giving a, a wide view because I know all of you are gonna be wanting to target more of your grade level. And if you are a district person, I would recommend actually, if you're doing a training, pulling these documents and letting your teachers have time 
to digest what has changed in their grade level specifically. Now, here's where the bulk of the changes have occurred and it makes perfect sense that they did change a lot. NGSS in middle school, six, seven, and eight, did not put it by grade level. They did a middle school band. So it was just all middle school. They didn't have what was taught in sixth grade, seventh or eighth, Kentucky did that. Well, after 10 years, they probably did see that some things maybe didn't fit as well as they thought they would. And so that was kind of the logic. And that's what I liked about the KDE. And I apologize for going back and forth on a couple of things, but I'm going to because I think it's very important. That is one thing I do like about the KDE version. Let me pull that back up here for just a second. Because when you look at what KDE provided, they tell what was moved and why. Like on the 4 LS41 was moved from grade three as it connects with the core ideas related to earth and space science explored at grade four. So notice on KDEs, it's actually trying to give a little bit of reasoning of why the committees made the changes that they did. So just an FYI on those, I'm gonna close those now. So notice in middle school, I'm just going to give you a, a second to look at those. I also have the PowerPoint that PIMS are that's going to take it and look at each standard here for you. But I like the one pager because it fits it all right there for us. But this is showing where it actually got moved to a new grade. And then this is just modifications to wording in the performance expectation. And you'll notice high school had very, very little change because they're still in a band and there really wasn't much to change except just to those two that have been found at this point that has been modified a little bit. But middle school, six through eight, which, you know, Miss Miller and Miss Hoskins, that's your, that's your world. <laughs> Sorry, but that, but it does make sense that that's where some of the trains, but it's not as much as what it might seem. It looks like it might, but you're, you're, it's really not a big amount of changes when we get in here and take a look at the PowerPoint. So now if you'll click on the PowerPoint, the nice thing is it has the crosswalk document that I, we just were looking at, that one pager. Notice the architecture of the standards have changed. We used to have this on the left. This is the old on the left. The new is on the right. What's your first impression looking at those two? What do you think of that change in the architecture? Left is the old, right is the, is the draft. Looks like you had a lot more to uh, kind of sift through on the old document. It's a little easier to, not, not as busy, I guess. That, that's a great term, Ronnie, that you use there because that's how a lot, it, it's, it's more simplistic. It's not, it's not throwing so much at me at once. Uh, like what Ms. Miller said, it's not so cumbersome as the left. The left has a lot of information. The right is more simplistic. And so I see a lot of people are going to like this. Now, there are going to be some people who still like the old. I even did one training that some people have already told me that they're going to keep the left standards on hand. They're going to keep the NG, they, they're actually going to keep the NGSS uh, version here to the left for them. But they're going to utilize the right because they do like that it's just cleaner. It's not as cumbersome. It, it's, it's just simplistic. And so it does have a nicer look and it's not so overwhelming when you first look at it. So uh, much more easier to read. Now they did get rid of, and I'm not sure how much uh, some of you uh, utilized, but we no longer are using the Common Core in reading and math, but they did have those connections that help science to be able to, con to connect to the reading and math standards. And then what I also like were these connections to the DCIs. The nice thing is, not much change, so that connection is still going to be there in those old standards, which is great for trying to accelerate learning where students are behind, and you can kind of see where the connections are. Oh, I agree, Ms. Taggart. It does help. The simplistic look is just so much easier, and I think it's not as scary. 
for some, I think some people, when they looked at what's on the left, it, it just blew their mind and they didn't even know where to start. Yes, agree, especially new people, new people, new hires, uh, very much a more simplistic. Now, remember, I'm going to print you a hard copy when the final draft comes out. Oh, yeah, I agree, Miss Miller. The new teachers having to look at the left, that's, it's a little overwhelming for them. So, and what's also nice, it's not a lot of pages either, because if you go by grade level, you know, like when you look at kindergarten, it's very simplistic and it doesn't, it's not so many. It doesn't defeat you at first. Like, oh, I like that. That's a good point. It seems more doable. It does. I love that. That's a great connection. Um, it, it just doesn't overwhelm. So I, I'm, I'm with you. I think that that right is going to be well received by a lot of people with this. Now, Proposed changes, the grade level overviews. We already looked at that. And so that's a great place to start, especially if you're gonna be working like vertically with science teams, working with them, making sure they're taking the time to read the grade level overviews because I'm sure none of, nobody else does this, but I have a tendency to skip the overviews and not read that information and would go straight to the standards. But it's a very helpful summary to kind of get my brain wrapped around what I'm getting ready to get into. So keep those overviews in mind, they, they are helpful. Um, elementary performance expectation change. So this is the old. So it used to be this analyze and interpret data from fossils to provide evidence of the organisms and environments in which they live long ago was a third grade. Notice the three is now a four. So that would be a change in the NGSS standards. You would find in the NGSS, it's still gonna be back in third grade. That's why it's important your teachers are utilizing the new standards from Kentucky when the next school year starts. They do need to make the shift. Doesn't mean you still can't go to NGSS. It's a great resource because it's basically still all the same stuff, but there's just gonna be a few little changes. And so making sure we have copies of those. Kindergarten, you'll notice just some clarifications to the, their statements uh, has been modified just on these two PEs. That's it for kindergarten. First grade didn't even have any changes. So you know what that makes me feel good about is, okay, yeah, we've had them for 10 years. Our test scores haven't been great, but we've got additional seven years now to where we can hopefully get a hold on these standards. And I'll be honest, and I've been into some different districts when I've sat and talked with some of our science teachers. Uh, I'll share this with you. I had one teacher, we were looking at breaking down uh, the standards and talking about, um, they were looking at it and they said, now, wait a minute, if this is my DCI, my disciplinary core idea, and the performance expectation, let's say, has cause and effect, as uh, that is the cross-cutting concept. They looked at me and said, so I should have a cause and effect question on my assessment? Ding, ding, ding. The light bulb just went off for that teacher that yes, they've been teaching 22 years, but yes, that's exactly what it means. Your assessment should reflect all three dimensions. It's not just about the DCI, not just about that quick recall knowledge, we have to get in those skills, which I love that Denise brought that up right at the beginning of our meeting. That needs to be part of our assessments as well. And I asked her, I said, so what does that mean about our science and engineering practices? So if it was designing an investigation, guess what? I need to do something connected to designing an investigation in my assessment. If that's all tied together, that's making sure I'm getting all three dimensions of the science standard in my assessment. So making sure that we're doing that. Uh, it's, a, it's a big instructional shift for us in science. Second grade, cross-cutting concept patterns was added to uh, to LS41. And so it does have that. It, it actually breaks it down to where you have them all three there together, which is great. Good, nice, easy visual and helps them to see the connections, but that's it for second grade. Not much. So that's the good news. 
third grade cross-cutting concept, cause and effect was added to um, this disciplinary core idea types of interactions, which is uh, performance expectation 3PS24. Notice it has a note that this is no longer a performance expectation. That's the one we were talking about just a second ago. That one has been moved and no longer a third grade performance expectation that has now been moved to fourth. So just making sure, so you're gonna have, you've got access to these slides. I put them in the chat for you. I've also got a link to a participant folder. And remember, don't forget to start. I forgot to start, y'all let me forget. Don't let me forget. So I'm gonna put a star. I'm gonna add that to my little practice folder. And right there it is. There's my PowerPoint. Yep, got it. Notice there was a clarification statements have been modified a little bit. And a lot of times the modifications, the, when they modify the, the PE, it's not to change the content, it's to clarify and to help with understanding of what the standard is. So it's not to, not to completely change the whole intent of it. So here's fourth grade, a new DCI was added on um, four PS4, so physical science, and it was the engineering technology uh, standards right here, this optimizing the design solution that was not previously connected. Technically, those ETSs are in the whole grade level. I mean, every grade level is supposed to be addressing those, but that is something to bring to your attention and to the teacher's attention that that's now directly connected to this PE. You want to make sure you're aware of that. So that's it for fourth. Okay, fifth grade, Ms. Miller, this is you. You're uh, fifth grade. So we can look and see that, and, and you probably could have sat down and read through these and caught this really quick in the draft, but on five, Earth Space Science 3.1, the PE was modified, a clarification statement was added, and a DCI was added. So that defining and delimiting engineering problems was added it was not there before and then just a, a they modified and added a clarification statement on that and that's it for fifth grade that's all that fifth grade has as far as a change for you sixth grade all right miss hoskins and miss miller this affects both of you you're going to see a few more changes for sixth grade because like we said middle school ngss did it in a grade band they did not do it by grade level. And so it makes sense after 10 years with the standards, they may have seen some of them didn't fit so well. And KDE did a nice job of trying kind of justifying why they moved what they did, where they did on this one. So here on middle school, we can see added to sixth grade is six PS24. It was seven and six LS16. And what was removed from sixth grade, you can see that PS13 went to eighth and PS22 went to seventh. So just a little bit of shifting. And I think when you start looking at some of the shifts, it kind of makes sense. Sixth grade, you had two, two PEs were moved to sixth grade from seventh. And here's one of them. So types of interactions is what we're looking at is the D DCI. And then here's the other one, Organization for Matter and Energy Flow in Organisms. And so here's the other one. These are the two that were added to sixth grade. You do have the PE and clarification statements were modified on this Earth-Based Science Standard 2.2. <laughs> and a new DCI was added. So notice here, bio, biogeology was not there before. So now that has been added in. Now we're looking at seventh grade. All right, so Ms. Hoskins, we're going back to you. 
In seventh grade, we always are thinking about, we know because that is that accountability year. So looking at this, but keeping in mind, anything from seventh grade back can be on that assessment. And I always kid and say everybody, you know, when I was teaching seventh grade science, I loved, loved earth science. It was my favorite thing to teach. For anyone who knows the science standards and what where NGSS put earth science, it was not in seventh grade. Let me tell you, it broke my heart. Took all what I love teaching away. So here we're going to take a look at what is now added to seventh grade and where it pre was previously. So 7PS22 has been added, and that was in six. And 7PS31 was in eighth, has now went to seventh. And LS18 is now in seventh when it was in eighth. And what has been removed, you can see, we just talked about it, that went to six in a couple also went to eighth. So LS14 and LS15 went to eighth. I believe that's growth and development. So taking a look at seventh grade, newly added, that was moved from six, kind of gives you just that look, a nice clean look at it. So now that is a seventh grade standard. And then we also look at 7PS31. That's that con construct and interpret graphical displays of data, which makes sense with all the things that, you know, we have been doing that, that kind of makes sense to tie in there. Scales, portion, and quantities. A lot of you probably were already doing it anyway. Uh, seventh grade, newly added to seventh is this. Uh, 7 LS18, which is the information processing, gathering, and synthesizing. This is where you're seeing most of the changes, is in this middle school band. 7 PS43, it was uh, PE was modified and a new element of the DCI is specified. So kind of taking just a little different turn with it right here in the DCI when it says that right here. 7LS1 had a clarification. And, and as people are diving into the standards, some more things are being found. So if I do an, something else, I have another training I'm going to do June 28th. If I have something that looks a little different than what I presented now, it's because maybe found something else or made some additional changes. Look at what was added to eighth grade. Now, remember, this is where it gets a little confusing because we've already talked about six and seven. So we've already talked about this being moved out of sixth grade and this being moved out of seven. I like these little slides. I think they're handy just to kind of get an overview. For those of you in district, these are really nice to be able to share, especially with your middle school teachers, because that's where the biggest changes have occurred. And so here we can see newly added that was moved is this. It was, it used to be six, now it's eight. But it kind of, when you look at it, it does make sense of connecting it to eighth grade. Same thing with the um, eight LS14 was moved from seven. kind of ties in nicely of uh, your genetics, which is uh, the traits and, and heredity that's in eighth grade. It's a good connection growth and development is to your heredity. And the same thing for the 8LS15. It's still growth and development, but if you notice that, it even talks about the genetic factors influence of growth and development. It kind of doesn't fit very well with the heredity in your eighth grade that was already being covered. So a lot of your eighth grade teachers were already doing that, even though it was a seventh grade standard. And a new DCI was added. This was one social interaction and group behavior. So that is something a lot of teachers were already addressing that, but 
making sure that they're aware that's been added to eighth grade. Another PE was just slightly modified in wording. And an earth space science was modified. And like I said, these are yours. And I know some of you are sitting here and looking through them yourself, especially if you're teaching a particular grade level, those are probably the ones you're wanting to focus on the, more, the most with this. High school, very little change. Look at that. One, two PEs had slight modifications and changes in their PE and the clarification statement. And whenever they made those changes, they were very slight, usually just for clarifying or, and that's it. That's the changes. So where was the bulk of them? Middle school, kind of makes sense. The last thing that I want to share that I have on my PowerPoint here, let's see, right here we go. So that's the PIMSA re resource. I do have uh, some of you that's been in trainings with me before. Um, I have this one document that a friend of mine in district had made and I had asked her permission to let me modify because she'd only done it for grades K through six and I changed it for, and I'm gonna get your all's input of what you think on this, but I'm gonna drop it in the chat here for you. So you can click on it, I'll click on it up here. So now when I click on it, I'm gonna add it to that. So I'm gonna add the little star thingy. And I'm gonna add it to my little practice folder. So right there it is. So I have revised it based upon the drafts. So I am looking for some feedback on how to make this better and easier to read. For those of you that have done trainings with me, I share this because every grade level is so important when it comes to teaching the science standards. And that's why I really like this document is it shows how each grade level is so important. And if they don't teach their standards, it's a problem. Um, and so let's take a look at PS1 matter and its interactions. So that's our DCI. PS1A is structure and properties of matter. Notice that is taught in second grade. It did not change, hence the green color. I think I do need to put a key on there, don't you, on that? But green means it's where it was, no changes, nothing's really been altered. So that's in second grade, and so is chemical reactions. It's not even taught in fourth grade, you all. You can't tell me on that state assessment, chemical reactions is not gonna be taught, is not gonna be a question. It's gonna be on there. And so we know that fourth grade teacher is gonna do some accelerating and getting that uh, content in there somewhere of talking about physical and chemical changes and physical and chemical properties. But it's really important that that second grade teacher does that uh, content themselves. Um, so that the, the kids have at least had some vocabulary at some point. So what this does is this is showing at which grade level. Green means no changes. Everything's good. Yellow means there's been some slight changes. They need to check that particular DCI. Now remember, that's the orange there in the center. There's been some little tweaking on some of those in the PE, the performance expectation. So that is physical science. Notice everything's basically the same. Very, very few changes. Some of those that were moved, we heard to eighth grade. We can see that. We can also see the yellow marks here that there's been some adjustments and some moves and shifts here. For lot, Now this one has not been shared with anyone because I just fixed this in the past week to get it ready for this training. So you're the first group to get this. So I would appreciate any feedback on this. And so please let me know thoughts. I did do the arrows to kind of let people see where it moved to and from. Sometimes just the highlighting means that there's just been some changes just in, to check that particular DCI. So we can see basically everything's the same. Here's the one they talked about being moved from third grade to fourth. Oh, that should be yellow. Should maybe I found a mistake already, y'all. Um, 
so we'll want to make sure and make that adjustment but anyhow take a look are the colors even needed do i even need to have any colors on it should i just leave the x's plain thoughts on this here is the earth space we notice that most of it is has stayed the same with a few little modifications right here the biogeology didn't move from anywhere it hadn't even been assigned anywhere um Okay, thank you. I appreciate the comment there. Uh, and it also kind of helps you to see that things are not taught each year. I do very much like this document because it kind of helps provide that support of why it's important for each grade level to teach. And you can look like seventh grade, look a year, doesn't even have any earth and space science. That's what makes, you know, I'm not a happy camper when that happens, but not a, not taught at all in seventh grade but when I look at life science I don't have a lot to teach in seventh grade but where I ha am heavily loaded in seventh grade is physical that is where a bulk of what I do teach is going to be now I'll just be honest with you I'd stick some minerals in there probably still because that's great for physical and chemical properties that's just Mary Belcher talking and uh so that that would be something of where you could pull in and really good labs of being able to have kids work with charts and data and graphs on that. But notice seventh grade is really heavy in the physical science. Eighth grade doesn't hardly have any. Sixth grade's got a little bit, but not a lot. Sixth grade's really heavy in the earth. Eighth grade is heavier in the life science, we can see. So by looking at this, you see where more of the content is being uh, put at. And like I said, our space didn't have a whole lot of changes in it. And then, of course, the engineering technology and application of science, that's every grade level, all the, you know, all of them are being taught in those grade levels. And so there's that resource. Okay. Th yes. Th thanks for. I'm sorry, Mary. Go ahead. I was, I was going to say thanks for sharing that. I really like that as well. I like the um, overview with you know uh, kind of where things are. It's it's a nice snapshot, and uh, mm -hmm. I think that'd be huge for your uh, uh, primary teachers to 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 show like. And I mean, you just reiterating what you said that you you can't teach it all in fourth, and I mean that's there's no way. And that's not, you, you know, what we're supposed to do anyway. We know that, but I mean, but that reiterates that you can't wait until, until then, and um, and yes. master all the material needed for the test. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm so glad you like it. And could this even help a principal to help them to say, see, and make that argument, like, in and say, and I know kindergarten. Okay, don't don't get me wrong. Kindergarten needs to be reading, math, I, writing, 100. percent As a district person. That's where my certification is, but I'm old and we did thematic units. And so we still taught science. And for what kindergarten has, take a look at kindergarten. They have one thing in, li in life science. In physical science, they get to do some fun stuff with forces and motion. And there's some really good children's lit. I'm really big on children's lit too and pulling the literature and the science together. And I think that's a beautiful connection. And it's a great thing too, to have the kids connect because um, not all kids, as you all know, have the same experiences. Some families, you know, expose their children to more uh, experiences than others, whereas some kids are very limited on what they are exposed to. And so, if we can utilize our literature and provide those experiences in the classroom, it's, it's, it's really helping all our students on that. But if you'll notice in kindergarten, so there's the physical science, there's their life, they have one there, and earth science, they've got a little bit more, but notice weather and climate, what a beautiful connection to their circle time when they talk about the weather. It would just be needing to take it a little step farther with their work and being a little more intentional. And same thing with natural resources, natural has, those are things, yes, that, that would be a lot of fun to do with kids and you could have some fun with. But 
this is just for the point of helping people to see that everybody's important and um, that if we miss one grade level of not teaching their science, it is going to cause issues. And like Ronnie said, a, a great point of, you can't all be taught in fourth grade. You can't all be taught in seventh grade. And so kind of helping them to see uh, that connection. So just an FYI, that's that document for you, which is, like I said, not been shared out anyplace else. You're the first to get it um, on that one. Now, the next thing, some curriculum templates. So let me get you access to this. And this is a folder. So for those of you that are teachers, you do want to check with um, your district because most likely they have some forms for you, but maybe your district does not. And if they don't, maybe you can find something here that could be beneficial. So if you'll click on that link in the chat, it's going to pull up a folder. And I have a few, I didn't include a middle school scope and sequence because of the changes. I'm going to wait and find one with the revisions because it does need to be modified. And this one does too, but just, it, it's just the one from third to, what went from third to fourth grade. So if you take a look at this first with the calendar, it's a curriculum map template. And this is yours. Make a copy make it your own and so this actually has the calendar embedded the only hesitation i would have with you utilizing this one is if you use a calendar i love a calendar but calendars change from year to year so the second template might be more your style but if you just love that calendar like me because i'm that person that would do the calendar one i always did you can put the name of your unit. You can have your academic standards. Whatever you use as a district, your learning target, learning intention, or success criteria for that unit can be put here. Underpinnings. Now, what that means is what's previous content that they need to know? Well, you just saw the DCIs, and you can see where it comes from. But you go to your standards, and that's that center section with those connections on the old standards. You can pull that from resources, labs, activities. Okay, you got most of you know me. I'm a little bit of, you know, over planner. I actually had links to my resources and my labs and my activities so that I could, my principal actually let this go for my lesson plan because I had it filled out so much that they were like, yeah, you just use that. Key vocabulary is huge what vocabulary you're going to make sure that you target in that lesson for that unit, and then any common assessment that I might use. I had my formative assessments. I had um, links to the assessments I was going to use in here. So just an FYI, so here's one. If you do not like the calendar, there is just one that has, you just put the instructional window. You might say August to September and put the numbers of days of weeks, ever how you want to get whichever rid of whichever one you're not going to use, because this is yours to change and modify. Do not keep learning target, learning intention, and success criteria. Delete what you don't use, what your district does not use. And your district may already have one that's better than this, but this is just kind of as you're planning for the year to map out. Now, if you're the only sixth grade science teacher, woohoo, great for you. But if you are working with multiple sixth grade science teachers in your district, it's very good to make sure that you are mapped to where you're teaching the same things around the same time. Because we know our kids are very much uh, transient they're moving a lot and so if I'm teaching in seventh grade I say the first semester I do my life science because I'm not doing any earth science um, in the second semester I'm doing physical science but let's say another teacher is teaching seventh grade and flipped it and I had a kid move to my district second semester they've already had the content I've taught they they're going to miss their life science and so trying to make sure everyone is on the same pacing guide, curriculum map, whatever what you want to call it, this is just a resource for you to be able to uh, utilize. Now, 
some templates are a little bit more simplistic. I love this example. This is Jefferson County. And this is their scope and sequence and how nice and easy that is. It gives the dates. This is straight from their website. They actually are plugging in the NGSS is what they have on this one uh, because K through five is NGSS. And you can see it's just a nice little snippet. And if I was a kindergarten teacher, I would love that to see, hey, I have that much time to teach sunlight and weather, 68 days, you know, total days in the unit are 20, number of days for active science instruction is nine, and number of days for reading informational text is one. So, you know, as a district, you could take something like that and modify it and change it as best that it would fit. But if your district already has something in place, use it. Do not use it. This was just for ideas or templates to maybe help with some thoughts on that. The next thing is resources by grade span. This is something I've been working. Oops. Did I not put that in there? Let's see. Yeah, anybody can get it. There you go. So what this has, I'll put this in the chat. So when you click on that, this is a document that for K2, there's your standards. NGSS is a great place to go. Going 3D with GRC. What's nice about this is when you click on it, it's actually got units by grade level. And these are handy that, to where teachers can use and they're, they're pretty good. You might have to do some tweaking, but notice, Ms. Miller, they've got fifth grade in there too. You probably are well aware of those, but those all have access to some units. Phenomenon K-5 units, uh, phenom so making sure we're pulling in the phenomenon. Wonder of Science, Stanford NGSS Assessment Project has a lot of really good resources. KDE, they've actually got a lot of really nice through course tasks. And I, I would recommend trying one of those, at least one um, for those. Jefferson County Public Schools has all kinds of information and next generation science storylines. I'm gonna go ahead. So fifth grade, here's your list, uh, Ms. Miller for grades three through five. And you can go back, you can go pick something from a third grade unit that you might need, especially if, um, some of the content was taught back in third grade. So some of the similar things, but a few things a little more because there are the released items. I have that in here as well. Will they be changing the TCTs? Uh, they will probably be making some adjustments. I think there is some work going on those, but um, Ms. Miller, you've been in this a while, so you were in it when the TCTs came out and everybody was scared to death of them, right? Um, but they have, okay, that's, I remember that too. They have such a nice bank of TCTs now, like when you go and take a look at them, you, you click on that link, and that might be something, I didn't start that page, did I? I'm going to go back and do it. So you scroll down to the bottom. Most of you already know this, and I'm going to go to fifth grade, Miss Miller, for you. And when I scroll back down, there are ones that are grade level specific. So I can go to acorn to oak tree. I can see the phenomenon, tree mass from gas and water, my science engineering practices, and my concepts. What's nice about these is when you click on them, it's got all of this nice information that kind of tells me what it is, what to do before the task, during, after, materials that you're going to need. It actually breaks it down and, you know, you see the blue for your science engineering, the orange for the DCI, and the green for the cross-cutting. Talks about the intent, kind of guides you through the lesson. And I, I didn't plan on clicking on this one, so what the student, it actually gives student responses. 
But then when I get down to the end is the actual student samples of what the students would be working with. And then what I like also is they've got the data. That is nice. You don't have to go hunt for it. It's already there. And so students having to go and take a look and analyzing data. Some of these are really good. If you haven't went and looked at them in a while, they added a bunch in the last two, three years to the TCTs. Because when they first had them out, I think they had one per grade level or two if you were lucky. And so there's a whole batch for you to go through and to be able to look at. So just an FYI there for you on that. Oh, I'm so glad they were good. They, I thought the TCTs were very challenging. I thought they were really good. Uh, it scared a lot of people, let me tell you, uh, when those things came out. And they are on the KDE site. They're actually linked. Oops, sorry, let me go back. So if you go to your grade span, it's right here. I've got a link for you. Um, I agree, they were challenging and we did need those. Something like that is a great thing to put in front of your kids, I think, because they need to have that challenge. So if you click on this, okay, don't forget to star your resources. So I'm gonna hit done. Notice once again, there it is. I can go find my resources. Now you might want to, when you click on these, star those if you if you like them and want to just make your own resources. Maybe you're going to pull them all together. But if I go to the through course task, it is on the KDE website. And so you have to scroll down. I tried to take it right to your page, but you do have to know to scroll down. It begins with first grade. So you might want to search by uh, your grade level. You could also search by topic because remember if you're doing a certain DCI, you know, we know the physical science is taught in second grade doesn't mean I couldn't go back and use a second grade when if I'm teaching it in sixth grade right. To maybe do some tweaking to as an introduction, but you might could use some data that they have from some of those that just saying. I usually went up I taught seventh grade so I all the time was pulling things from high school and eighth grade into seventh. Um, like I said, the released items have the, a link to those. I highly recommend you incorporate those in your in, in instruction uh, when you're teaching. Um, for six through eight, here's your page. Now, six through eight, wonderful research, resource that has a lot of units and where I have uh, Ms. Miller and Ms. Hoskins in the room, check it out. Open Sci Ed um, Middle School is green across the board as far as being aligned. It's one of the better options out there and it is free as far as the units. Now you can purchase some of the materials, but um, when you go here, let's go there. It has different curriculum. There's professional learning, but you can go to middle school science and you can be able to access their units and their teacher resources. So just be aware, this is things, and what's so nice, Ms. Hoskins and Ms. Miller, where you're here, you've got the summer to be able to peruse. You see where the changes are coming uh, with your standards. And so this kind of lets you be able to maybe go find some new materials, but this one, Open Syed, has really good reviews to be aware of. So just want to make sure that, I, I want to make sure you're aware of that. We don't have anybody in high school. There were three units released last, uh, in the spring, earlier in the spring, like maybe it was in February, it got put out, but there was one biology unit, one earth space unit, and one physical science unit that was released. And they're working on more high school units and elementary that they're, and these are open resources, which means they are free. The units are free. Will they still maybe need some tweaking? Yes, probably so, but it gives you something to work from. It's so hard to try to build a unit that really meets the three dimensions. It's really good if you can go find something that's pretty good and you just kind of modify and tweak it yourself. 
but just an FYI on that. Just so just want to make sure you're aware of that. Let's see what else. Mary, can I ask mm -hmm. a question? Please do. Kelsey. Hey, it's Kelsey. Um, okay, so our district is looking to purchase some resources to support our high school teachers and open side has been on the table and I'm new to this role um, and just uh -huh. kind of, you know, helping out but um, so just to clarify open side is more just like there's a couple of different resources that they have available it's not something that has a full fledged curriculum yet middle school is full fledged right it is it's got it all. See, High we have school, Amplify for K-5 or K-8. Which, I mean. is, which is another great resource. Open Syed does have higher rate, ratings than Amplify, but Amplify is good. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that that's a bad, I do think you have to work on the assessments a little bit with Amplify mm -hmm. and do some tweaking on them, but it's a really great resource. Um, for high school, they are in process of releasing those units. And so as of right now, there's one in each okay. in biology or space and in the physical science, but that's all they, they're, they're on, they're on schedule to release more, but they don't have the full enchilada that you're looking for on that, but they will. Okay. So I don't, I don't know if you want to let them try to go. I was textbook coordinator in my district and I honestly had my teachers look at me and said, well, let's not purchase anything because nothing's there yet. And what's nice about science is a lot of the things are free now because that was kind of one of the pushes they had with it, but there's things coming. And so that's the hard thing is can we make it until they get everything released from open Syed? Um, that's conversations for you all to have. I mean, you can get something else, but we already know it's not going to be what right. you need it to be. And that's okay. the struggle. I just wanted oh, to wow. clarify because like we're literally having a, a re resource review next week. And so I want to be okay. able to like lay that on the table for everybody. So yeah, middle school, it would be good. Yeah. High school, the it's units difficult. they have are good, but it's not complete. Okay. Awesome. Thank okay. you so much, Mary. Oh, you are very welcome. Um, but <clears throat> here's some just additional links to some things um, for some different grade levels. Uh, so welcome to take use. If you have additional resources that you really like, a lot of what I have went through is look through some resources that PIMSR has recommended because they go through a very strict vetting process you look at ed reports of what that they have recommended which is just a online resource that evaluates science curriculum and like kelsey mentioned if your district is looking at purchasing amplify is a nice one for k5 um doesn't mean it's perfect but it's a really good one um but you're going to need to work on the assessments i feel and, and some other pieces of it you do have open Syed that's coming for elementary and so and they are free now you can buy the kits that give you like materials and stuff um that uh, you might want to do but the units themselves are free and like i said middle school is complete so that's good news for you miss miller and miss hoskins you all got the the middle school is there and so you definitely might want to check that out for some planning this summer if uh, depending on what instructional resource you have in district. But that, I believe, was my last thing. Yep, thank you for being here today with me. I appreciate you um, um, so much for taking the time out of your very busy day. And we are getting done a little bit early, which is always a nice thing. I do want to uh, say I am. we are gonna be having a science standards training on June 28th. Uh, we're going to be looking at the three dimensions. We'll be having conversations about are we getting to the intent of the standards, you know, that clarity. Are we uh, making sure in our assessments, are we addressing the three dimensions? Like that one teacher I was telling you about that had that epiphany that, hey, my assessment should have the cross-cutting concepts and science engineering practices embedded in my assessments. So my assessment should be three-dimensional. So just making sure of that. But um, I do have that. I don't have the registration ready yet. I should have that by Friday. 
And so when I do get the registration, I'll just send you an email that'll have a link to our recording for today. And uh, I'll also include a registration link. Doesn't mean you have to be there. Uh, but just letting you know, especially for district staff, that you could share it with some science teachers or you are welcome to come and do science with me too. Uh, would love to have you. Uh, we, I would ask that you complete this survey if you would, please. Um, whatever email you provide on this survey is where your certificate will be emailed to. So I know for those of you that are district staff, you're gonna need the ELA credit because you gotta have those 21 hours by June 30th. So it should email you that credit. If not, just let me know because sometimes some schools will block it. It should come from KVEC training uh, is what the email should be sent from. And so if you'll take just a couple minutes and uh, give me any tips or tricks that I need to keep in mind and to do for future trainings, other things you would like to see or additional support, please put that in there uh, to let me know. And hopefully you got some good information today that will help you uh, work on your curriculum and your instruction and uh, be able to, to get to uh, some good resources as well. But thank you so much for being here today and taking the time. And as soon as you finish your survey, you are done.